Hello everyone, good evening. Today we are going to learn the most important for long transmission line which is rigorous method. So, many of the students have requested this video, that's why I am making the video right now. Right now it's uh, 10.30 pm, right. So, first of all you just need to understand this diagram. The diagram is perfectly clear, so the question is easily solved. The biggest problem is this diagram. A diagram is not clear in this diagram. So, the question is not clear in this diagram, right? So, let's understand this diagram. I will set up the first thing I did to make the video small. So, you can use the net to use the net. That's why we can clear the net to make it easy. Because it is urgently done. So, you can see that there is a transmission line. There is a transmission line where there are many elements connected. Series elements and sunk admittance. Many number of elements are connected. So, we can say that there are series elements and all these are sunk elements. सीरीज में आए रेजिस्टन्सीज एंड इंडक्टन्सीज एंड पेरल में आए कैपेसेंसीज कैपेसेंस नाइन हम आप एक कर लॉन्ग ट्रांसमिशन मीडियम ट्रांसमिशन एंड शोर्ट ट्रांसमिशन लाइन सो इन मीडियम ट्रांसमिशन लाइन हमें नॉमिनल टी नॉमिनल पाई जो कर नॉमिनल टी लें सपोज तो आई रीते आप नॉमिनल टी डायग्राम ड्रॉ कर सो ऑल दीज आर सीरीज इम्पीडन्स सीरीज इम्पीडन्स कहवा पेरल में कनेक्टेड है सन्ट एने कह सन्ट एडमिटन्स तो यहाँ आ जनरली कैपेसिटन्स ओके सो आवा तो घना बढ़ा एलिमेंट हे ने लॉन्ग ट्रांसमिशन लाइन है सो सो वी आर टेकिंग ओनली वन एलिमेंट यो देर आर मेनी एलिमेंट्स बट वी आर टेकिंग ओनली वन एलिमेंट लेट्स अंडरस्टेन्ड दीस डायग्राम वेरी वेल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दीस इज सेंडिंग एंड वोल्टेज वी एस load is connected, the current is I. So, we have assumed a small element here. I have to assume a small element. Small element means what? Small element means what? Because there are many elements. So, we have to select one element. So, that's why we have to write here dx. Okay. So, this element is at a distance x from the receiving end side. आ जरूरी है रिसीविंग एंड साइड से त्या एक्स डिस्टन्स एक एलिमेंट है हियर इट इज सीरीज इम्पीडन्स हियर इट इज सन्ट एडमिटन्स ओके सो इट इज स्मोल पर यूनिट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज झेड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल तब तो आ बु इंट्रोडक्शन कर ले सो ऑल देट वॉट इज झेड झेड इज दी सीरीज इम्पीडन्स सीरीज इम्पीडन्स ऑफ अ लाइन पर यूनिट लेंथ That is most important. That is per unit length. So means what? If I am taking this is 10. So that will be 10 ohm per kilometer. Okay. So impedance Z. Z means ohm per kilometer. Okay. So in this is what we have perfectly only ohm. Only ohm. So we need to multiply by the kilometer. Suppose I am multiplying by 400. Sorry. 100 kilometers. So, kilometer cancelled out and the total impedance is 1000 ohm. That's why we need to multiply by a length or a distance, kilometer, meter, etc. So, impedance Z is a series impedance per unit length. To make it in ohm, to convert into ohm, we have to multiply by the distance and this distance is dx. That's why here impedance is Z dx. Pela to akhabar ovi joe. Ela apne impedance Z ad lakhi. But it is at a small distance. Dx. Long distance is L. Total transmission line distance is L. Length. But we have assumed this element at a distance x from the receiving side. So impedance is Z. But it is in per unit length. Per length. So that's why we need to multiply with a distance. Which is dx. Because this impedance is for this much amount of distance, dx. That's why we have multiplied dx, not x. Got it? This diagram? Okay. So, I have to write this as z. This is what we have into dx. Because this element is in the distance is between dx. These two points, between these two points. And the distance is dx. That's why it is z into dx multiplied by the length. Clear? Okay, similarly here, what is y? Sunt admittance of a line 
which is also in per unit length that's why we have multiplied with dx so that is y dx or z dx and y dx clear okay now which side voltage will be higher sending side or a receiving side obviously sending side in the sending side thi tame voltage send karso pachi voltage drop thase pachi same ni side receiving voltage mare so here voltage is v which side from the receiving side it is voltage v towards receiving side this is not receiving end voltage to be clear to be specific this voltage v is towards receiving end not receiving end voltage so that's why i have written here v v is the voltage at the end towards receiving end this end is for this element only okay uh, so capital v is the voltage at the end which end towards the receiving end <laughs> okay એટલે આ ડાયગ્રામ જ મેન છે જો આ અન્ડરસ્ટેન્ડ કરી લીધું તો ઇઝીલી થઈ જશે બધું સો ધીસ વી ઇઝ ટુવર્ડ્સ ધી રિસીવિંગ એન્ડ સો ઓબ્વિયસલી ધીસ સાઈડ વોલ્ટેજ વિલ બી હાયર સો હાઉ મચ એમાઉન્ટ ઓફ હાયર દેટ ઇઝ ડિનોટેડ બાય ડીવી સપોઝ આઈ એમ ટેકિંગ હિયર ઇટ ઇઝ હંડ્રેડ વોલ્ટ ફોર એક્ઝામ્પલ ઓનલી હંડ્રેડ વોલ્ટ એન્ડ હિયર ઇટ ઇઝ ટેન વોલ્ટેજ ડ્રોપ ધેન હિયર વોલ્ટેજ વિલ બી નાઇન્ટી વોલ્ટ ઓબ્વિયસલી હંડ્રેડ માઇનસ ટેન નાઇન્ટી ફોર એક્ઝામ્પલ ઓકે so how much amount of voltage drop is here that is dv so 90 that is v here voltage drop dv so 90 plus 10 means v plus dv is 100 volt that's why voltage return here is v plus dv so v plus dv here voltage drop is dv and output is only v so what is v plus dv v plus dv is the voltage at the end which end but towards the sending end this is not sending end voltage okay be specific voltage at the end towards the sending end okay clear this diagram and yeah current what is i plus dv i plus dv means current entering to this element i plus dv is entering so according to kcl small amount of current will be in the shunt admittance di and entering and going out is capital i which is passing through the load clear now so current entering is i plus di from i plus di di is going to the shunt admittance or passing through the shunt admittance and remaining current flows towards the load okay so what is i current leaving from this element entering to the element small element dx and leaving from the element dx so this is main concept to understand the diagram clear okay so now you all understand very well what is vs v plus dv y dx z dx why we have written here a z dx okay so clear so introduction is clear this small element is a distance x from the receiving side ane ek dhyan ma rakhjo last ma no use aavse pacho okay so now next for small element dx what is the series impedance series impedance is obviously z into dx and what is shunt admittance y multiplied by distance that is dx so that's why series impedance is written here is a z dx and shunt admittance y dx so now voltage rise voltage rise okay so rise in a voltage in the direction of increasing x that is also important increasing x means what towards this side x is increasing here x is increasing and if we are going from sending to receiving x is decreasing so this voltage rise for x is increasing means what receiving to sending side and obviously here voltage is higher rather than this so what is the rise in a voltage suppose let's say here voltage is 10 sorry 90 <laughs> and here voltage is 100 so how much amount increased in the voltage which is 10 yes here it is 
here it is 100 so total voltage increase or we can say voltage rise is 10 only denoted by dv here okay that's why what is dv so we can simply apply the equation like ohm's law which is v equals to ir so v equals to ir rise in voltage okay so that is current i and instead of r we need to write the impedance because voltage drop is due to impedance only not due to admittance so dv equals to i into z into dx that is the perfect impedance for this much amount of voltage drop that's why we need to consider z dx okay so dv what is dv how much amount of rise in a voltage that is i current passing is i i into z dx so multiply by dx so dv by dx is i into z of equation number one so we have mentioned the voltage okay so dv by dx equals to i into z similarly we need to find out the current passing through the shunt admittance so here current is i plus di so current passing through this shunt admittance is di only so difference in current di which flows through the shunt admittance is what so you apply the for, uh, formula of current i equals to v by z and reciprocal of z is admittance so we can write i equals to v y so di equals to v into y but here shunt admittance is y dx that's why i have written v y dx we are going step by step very slowly to better understand it di equals to v y dx so what is the equation di by dx means change in current with respect to distance change in voltage with respect to distance is v y this is equation number two so we got two important equations dv by dx i into z di by dx v into y now for the solution or to make the differential equation we need to differentiate this equation number one okay so differentiate equation number one with respect to x so dv by dx and differentiate it so that will be d2v by dx square second differential d2v by dx square impedance z is constant and differential of i so that's why di by dx so d2v by dx square equals to z into di by dx d2v by dx square equals to z into di by dx we have the value of di by dx put it equation number two over here so v into y that's why the differential equation this is, that is second order differential equation second order differential equation means second ODE which you have studied in a maths very well I think so d2v by dx square rewriting the equation d2v by dx square equals to v z1 why I have write in this format we will understand it in a second part so d2v by dx square is v z1 so now I will explain you this uh, second order OD how to solve this OD if you know this this solution then only you can find the solution of this order this uh, second order differential equation directly so this much amount of part is cleared very well right again so okay it's better to write it down all please note down so in the first part I have mentioned the diagram and written all the parameters here what is Z what is Y what is V I D V D I etc and this diagram and this totally impedance is Z DX sound admittance is Y D Y so amount rise voltage rise in a voltage that is DV so simple like Ohm's law dv equals to i into 
z dx because here impedance is z dx we have multiplied by dx because z in a per unit length so dv equals to iz dx divided by dx so dv by dx is iz similarly di by dx equals to vy okay so differentiate this equation with respect to x we are getting di by dx in the equation in this equation so place it over here vy v common and z y and i can write like this as well d2v by dx square minus v into z1 equals to 0 now how to solve the second order differential equation so as a note i am explaining how to solve the second order equation d2v by dx square minus let's say uh, suppose uh, constant a y equals to 0 here constant is a we are having this variable z and y here so differential of v with respect to x here differential of y with respect to x so to solve this let's back to the engineering mathematics suppose we are going to solve this equation then we were writing like this d square minus 4 equals to 0 so d square equals to plus 4 and d equals to plus n minus 2 so here roots are real and repeated okay so roots are real and repeated so first root m1 is plus 2 second root is minus m2 this we have learned in Laplace transform as well, in circuit network as well, and in circuit, uh, no, CSE as well. So, roots are real and non-repeated. So, directly we were writing the solution. Why? Remember, uh, we were taking C1 constant. Yes, C1 cos hyperbolic M1x plus C2 sin hyperbolic M2x. That's it. So, how to solve the second order differential equation? Here, I have written this constant 4 to make it easy. So, d square minus 4, d equals to plus or minus 2. So, the answering, I need to place c1 cos hyperbolic 2x plus c2 sin hyperbolic minus 2x. Here, roots are plus 2 and minus 2. So, this is the solution. Similarly, apply this formula for this equation. Let's compare. So, here variables are y and x, y and x, in the numerator it is y, so we got the solution of y, here the variable is v, v and x, so we will get the solution of v for this equation, okay, here, so here equation was d2 y by dx where so we got the solution of y here the equation i am rewriting the equation d2 v by dx square minus uh, v z y equals to zero so we can assume this is our constant z y so we can get directly the solution of v instead of y which is c1 cos hyperbolic uh, m1x plus c2 sine hyperbolic m2x but we don't know the value of z and y so according to your book they are taking constant k1 so i am also taking constant k1 uh, this is as a note you no need to write this in the exam k1 cos hyperbolic m1 m1 means here zy that's why x zy plus c2 and yes very well here we got the under root of this 4 yeah 
4 goes to right hand side and there will be under root of 4 that's why 2 here only it is zy so going to the right hand side and there will be for the solution there will be under root of 4 like here under root of zy that's why equation is like this c2 sin hyperbolic x under root of zy for the same this was for the comparison okay how we got this equation because in every book direct solution is given and no one is remembered this maths 3 after two years so that's why i tried my best <coughs> to understand it okay so now we got the solution constant k1 and k2 so this is the solution of voltage v Okay, K1 cos hyperbolic x under root zy, K2 sin hyperbolic x under root zy. Now we need the formula of I, current I. So I am differentiating this equation with respect to x. So dv by dx. Constant K1. Differential of cos hyperbolic is sin hyperbolic only, not minus sin. Normal trigonometric function, differential of course is minus sign, but here it is hyperbolic function. So, differential will remain the positive plus as well. So, K1, differential of course hyperbolic is sin hyperbolic theta, sin hyperbolic x, but A into, we need to multiply by this constant under root z1. You remember this very well, I think. Differential of sin x. Differential of sin x is cos x. But what is the differential of sin 2x? Differential of sin 2x is cos 2x into 2. We were multiplying by a constant or we can say the coefficient of x which is 2. So that's why 2 cos 2x. Here coefficient of x is under root zy. So multiply by under root zy. Explaining each and every step, each and every small step. Plus, K2, differential of sine hyperbolic, cos hyperbolic, uh, x under root zy. And we need to multiply by a coefficient of x under root zy. So, this is dv by dx. And uh, prefer the equation number 1. Equation number 1 was dv by dx equals to iz dv by dx equals to i into z we have divide, uh, derived here i into z so i am writing dv by dx equals to i into z i am writing here ok so for i we need to divide by z both of these sides into z divided by z both of these sides so here this is uh, i here a1 sin hyperbolic x zy constant is under root zy and uh, divided by z. Here is also k2 under root zy cos hyperbolic x zy and divided by z. So you all know that z. Uh, we can write this as uh, root z into root z so root z cancelled out so remaining root z is in the denominator so I am writing like this that's why under root y by z here also root z root z cancel out so under root y by z that is the equation of a current we can take a common in this step as well under root y by z common hmm. under root y by z common so this is the equation of a current this is the equation of a voltage equation three. equation number four okay so now we need to convert it into sending receiving voltage and current to compare with abcd parameter right so, first of all, you guys write all this. Okay. So, now move ahead. We got the equation of voltage and current V and I. 
Now we need to find out all these two constants which are k1 and k2. To so find out this constant, to find this constant, put the initial values, right? So uh, look at in the diagram. If I take x is equal to 0, remember so what is x? x is the distance. We have taken that element from the distance x from uh, uh, receiving side, right? So from distance x, that was x and we were having that uh, element, series and sum element. But if I take the distance x is 0, if distance x is 0, we will be directly at the receiving end. So I can write like this, for x equals to 0, now I can take v equals to vr because now it is receiving end voltage and i equals to ir. Okay, so I have derived for distance x. Now for the initial condition to find the constants, I am making 0. If the distance is 0, then we will be at receiving end. That's why I am writing V equals to VR and I equals to IR. So V equals to VR, I equals to IR in here. But X is 0. So if I guess X 0 here, so that will be cos hyperbolic 0. And cos hyperbolic 0 is 1. Cos hyperbolic 0 is 1, k2, and sin hyperbolic 0 is 0. You can calculate and cancel. So we got the first constant k1. k1 is vr. So we got the first constant k1 is vr. Now put this, all these values here as well. I am writing i as i r. i as i r. And x equals to 0. So under y by z, k1, sin hyperbolic 0, which is 0, k2, cos hyperbolic 0, uh, which is 1. So k1 into 0 is 0, we got the second constant k2 into, and so um, k2 is under root z by y, under root z by y, Okay, so we got two constants k1 and k2. And last full and final steps. Okay, and we will get the answer very soon. So write this equation k1 and k2. Okay, so we got value of k1 and k2. k1 is vr and k2 is under root z by y ir. So put all these values. In the same equation, like we were doing in a Laplace transform in circuit network transient analysis, right? So we got two constant k1 and k2. I am putting the, all this value in equation number three and four. So here, k1 is replaced by vr. Okay, I make it very simple to rewrite here. Okay, here also k1 is vr. Okay. And K2, instead of K2, in place of A2, I am writing under root Z by Y, I R. Okay. Here also K2, under root Z by Y, I R. Done this step. Okay. Now, we got here V R and I R, V R and I R, according to ABCD parameter, right? But, here, here it is uh, only V and only I. We need it Vs and Is for the ABCD parameter. You guys know it very well, right? The equation of ABCD parameter. So, what I am doing? If x, distance x, distance x is 0, then we will be at receiving end. But now, I am writing like, if x is L, total L, line, L, you remember the diagram? Just have a look. If I am taking x equals to L from the receiving end, if x equals to N, then we will be at the sending end. That's why for x equals to L, I can write V equals to Vs and I equals to Is. That's why in place of x, I am writing L, x, L and here Vs. Same here. 
x replaced by L, so I can replace I by IS. Okay, done. Just a minute. A phone call. Okay, you guys write this. For x equals to L, I can write V equals to VS and I equals to IS. So here it is VS, here it is IS. Write down this equation. So we'll go to this equation in terms of under root cell y. Now we will put the propagation constant together. Now last full and final step. So we got the equation of Vs, we got the equation of Is. Let's multiply this under root y by z. So this term first term will be multiplied by under root y by z. And if we multiply under root y by z here, here the term is under root z by y. We are going to multiply by under root y by z, so both will be cancelled out. So this will be simple equation to remember. So I s equals to under root y by z. V r sin hyperbolic, I r cos hyperbolic. Perfect equation. Okay, right. Now, go time then. Here it is the third step. I have written all these steps over here. So if I get x equals to zero, we will be at receiving end. If x equals to f, then we will be at descending end. Okay. Now it's time for the last step, finally. Okay, Zc is the characteristic impedance. Okay, and the equation of characteristic impedance is under root z by y. So in place of under root z by y, I am placing the Zc characteristic impedance. That's why Vs equals to, and add one more. Gamma is the propagation constant, which is equals to under root y by z. So, in place of under root yz, yz, yyz, yz, and under root z by y, zc, under root yz equals to gamma. I am placing all this value here. So, v r cos hyperbolic l, under root z y, hence gamma, that's why l gamma, plus under root z by y, under root z by y means zc, ir sin hyperbolic l gamma. Got it now? Full and final equation. Is equals to. Here it is under root y by z. Reciprocal of this. So I will write it is 1 upon zc. V r sin hyperbolic L gamma or gamma L. I r cos hyperbolic L gamma or gamma L. It is gamma not r. Yeah, I know it looks like uh, R, but it is actually a gamma, okay, propagation constant. So finally, we got the equation of Vs, Is in terms of Vr and Ir. And the full and final step compare all this equation with the ABCD parameter. So I am writing the ABCD parameter here. Now, Vs, sending voltage, sending current. A, B, C, D. Receiving voltage, receiving current. So we got the ABCD parameter for a long transmission line. That is the Recorius method. Compare all these equations. Here is Vs, Vr. So this will be A. So we got the A parameter. Cos hyperbolic gamma L. Uh, IR. IR. Here is B, coefficient of IR is B, so we got the value of B parameter. So value of B is Zc sin hyperbolic gamma I. Now compare this equation IS with this. So we are we are C is a 1 upon Zc sin hyperbolic gamma I. And IR coefficient of IR is cos hyperbolic. Here it is D. So D equals to uh, cos hyperbolic gamma L. So this is the full and final equation. Okay. So I think you guys got it very well now. I have explained each and every single step very carefully in detail. So ABCD parameter here you can compare like in medium transmission line here again. A equals to D, which is the condition for a transition parameter. Okay, so all the best.